Greetings, my name is Father Thomas McKenzie. I'm the pastor of Church of the Redeemer, an Anglican church in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm here to walk you through the Stations of the Cross. Historically, the Stations of the Cross are based on something called the Via Dolorosa, which is where pilgrims in Jerusalem in the Middle Ages would follow the path of Christ from where Pilate ordered him to be crucified to where he was crucified and then buried. Um, that, of course, still continues today. The stations were set up, we think, first in the 14th or 15th centuries by the Franciscans who wanted to give people who could not go to Jerusalem a chance to walk that same path. And that's what I'll be doing today, walking that path with you uh, through this liturgy. This Stations of the Cross is somewhat different than a traditional one. Traditional ones are based in part on mystic visions given in the late Middle Ages to specific people. This one is based on uh, the Bible, <laughs> the uh, St. John Paul II, uh, Bishop of Rome, designed this station of the cross to go along with the scripture. And so it's called sometimes the biblical stations of the cross. So I will uh, show you the image that is on our church um, wall of our station, and I will read the liturgy with you. My suggestion is that you say a couple of things with me. The each station begins with this phrase, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, for by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And so I invite you to say that with me when I say it. And every station ends with something called the Trisagion. We say, holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. And I also invite you to say that with me. I'm going to do my best to give you a link to where you can find the entire text of this Stations of the Cross. But even without the text, you can hopefully uh, meditate upon the images that I'm gonna show you and hear the words of both the scripture and the prayers, and I'm hoping that it will be a blessing to you. This is the first station. Jesus prays in the garden of Gethsemane. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. God did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the second station. Jesus is betrayed by Judas Iscariot. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. We all like sheep have gone astray. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners, and to suffer death upon the cross who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, 
holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the third station. Jesus is condemned by the Sanhedrin. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. The chief priests in the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the chief priests asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Everyone will hate you because of me, but those who stand firm to the end will be saved. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to defeat the powers of darkness on our behalf. Grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression. And then we may fully proclaim your gospel. Use us in the cause of justice, in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the fourth station. Jesus is denied by Simon Peter. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him. You also are with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again, with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Let us pray. Oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the fifth station. Jesus is sentenced by Pontius Pilate. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply and Pilate was amazed. What shall I do then with the one you call King of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of his great humility. 
mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the sixth station. Jesus is tormented by the soldiers. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him, Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of this present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the seventh station Jesus carries his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Here is your king, Pilate said. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose beloved Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption, give us courage to take up our cross and follow him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the eighth station. Jesus is helped by Simon of Cyrene. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the countryside, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory at the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, our Savior. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the ninth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when they will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the tenth station. Jesus is crucified. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. In sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. A pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church peace and concord, and to us sinners everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and Spirit you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and mortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the 11th station. Jesus promises paradise to a criminal. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. All whom the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Health Station, Jesus unites his mother and his disciple. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his own home. He is a sign that will be spoken against, and a sword will pierce your own soul. Let us pray. O God, who foretold that in the passion of your Son, a sword of grief should pierce the soul of the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, mercifully grant that your Church, having shared with her in his passion, may be made worthy to share in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the 13th station. Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he said this, he breathed his last. He 
he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness for your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. This is the 14th station. Jesus is placed in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a large stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. Take a guard, Pilate ordered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. You will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see corruption. Let us pray. O God, your blessed Son was laid in a tomb in a garden and rested on the Sabbath day. Grant that we who have been buried with him in the waters of baptism may find our perfect peace in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. These are the concluding prayers. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood you have redeemed us. Save us and help us, we humbly beseech you, O Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have delivered us from the dominion of sin and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. And we pray that, as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his love he may raise us to eternal joys, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us a kingdom and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will mourn on account of him, even so. Amen. And now, go in peace.